Hey y'all, welcome back. It's MJ here, Just Plain Fun. And today I want to throw down a challenge for y'all and see if you're up to it. This is primarily for folks who own either a combination plane like a number 45. Ideally, you also own a bench plane of some sort. And it doesn't have to be any particular size. It can be any bench plane. So what the challenge is all about is it's all about practice. It's all about putting in reps. So whether you're a bodybuilder or a student or a woodworker or a wannabe YouTube star, you got to put in your reps. You got to put in your time. So if you were, you know, from a woodworking perspective, if you were trying to teach yourself to hand cut dovetails, you don't go out there the first day and just cut perfect dovetails right off the bat. You got to put in your reps. You got to you got to practice, you got to learn the techniques and then refine those techniques. But the nature of the challenge is this. You're going to put in your reps with your smoother or your jointer, whatever you want to use, or your four plane, you know, four, seven, six, whatever you want to use. You're going to put in your reps with that, smoothing the top of the board out and making sure that you're getting, that you're keeping it flat. So you're not ended up with a big bow in the center of it. You're not ended up, you know, canted to one side, which was a huge challenge for me when I first started out and still is a, a challenge sometimes. So keeping it perfectly or as close as you can perfectly square from, from the edge to the face. So you're going to smooth that out and then you're going to bring out the combination plane. My weapon of choice today is going to be my number 45. And I have a reading iron installed in here, as you can see. I was doing a little practice work before the video, of course. So I've got my reading iron installed. This is a Sweetheart Era number 45 here. It's pretty clean. I think I've shown it in another video or two. Got the micro adjust fence, which is a very helpful piece to have. And yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and, and lay down a reed here. So that I can again put in my reps. And if you're not terribly familiar with the 45, depending on who you talk to, they'll give you different advice about how to hold it and where to apply pressure and where to start, that kind of thing, how deep to set your blade, all that kind of stuff. But this is what I do is I start all the way on the far end and I give myself a path for the blade to take. And then I just work my way back. And I've got a little bit of a cold, got some or allergies or something going on. So my voice probably sounds a little funky. And if it sounds like I'm out of breath, I swear it's not because I'm terribly out of shape. It's because I can't hardly breathe. But as you can see, once you get your groove started, it's pretty simple. And that thing goes along pretty good. Half of the battle is just setting up the plane. Which, if y'all are interested, I can... I definitely show that and then you're going to work your all, way all the way back to the back of the board you get you a nice little reed going on there and if you got your blade nice and sharp you're going to get some clean lines and what i've done specifically with this one is i've intentionally set my depth stops so that they're not very very low so I'm not going to go very deep with this. And the idea there is, you know, one, this is practice. And two, I'm just kind of taking it slow. In this way in particular, in this sense in particular, it's not terribly different than a bench plane. You're not going to take a super deep cut just like you wouldn't take a super deep cut with your bench plane. So hopefully this is able to be caught on camera here. And then, as I was saying, I don't have this set very deep. The instructions actually say you can get away with just using this depth stop and that you don't need this one. This is my personal preference. I like to have both. I mean, you've got plenty of points of contact. You've got your fence that's up against the stock and then you've got this depth stop that's gonna stop you and keep the blade from going too low. But it's just a comfort thing for me. I like to have both. And that way, if I happen to you know, rock the plane side to side for some reason, especially if I'm coming this way. And this is another personal preference as well. I like to use a little bit of sandpaper and just run it down the grooves like so. 
I'm sure there's some unplugged woodworker somewhere that's kicking and screaming right now and is upset with me for using sandpaper. There's a few different things you can do. One, of course, you want to have your blade as sharp as possible because that's going to help you get a clean cut. And it also helps to... Uh, or you can also use a 98. That's what I started to say. What is that, 98, 99? I think you can use those side rabbits, if I'm not mistaken, if you set them up right. And maybe clean it out with that. But I personally have never used those. You know, it's, it's like a lot of things in woodworking where it's really just a matter of personal preference for how you like to do things. There is no right or wrong way to do it, right? Right? Just agree with me. And it might be a little bit tough to catch on camera if I'm not perfectly centered on that board, but this is why we practice, right? If I was doing a shelf for a bookshelf or something and I wanted to do this read on the lead on the edge, on the front edge of it, I wouldn't just get the board that I was working on and just go to town. I mean, I'm, I'm not that confident in my ability. So I would get some stock that's the exact same size and I would do some practice runs and, you know, make sure my tool was set up correctly, my, my 45 set up correctly before I actually went to the actual shelf. So that's that's essentially what we're doing here is we're just doing practice runs again. We're, we're, we're putting in the reps. So let me go ahead and take this back off using my seven and the four. That's just what I like to do. But whatever y'all like to do is, you know, up to you. Break out multiple planes, you know. This is your chance to check how sharp they are, to check if they're set up properly, you know, tuned properly, that kind of thing. Have some fun with it, you know. I just realized that if I only use the Lee Nielsen's, somebody's going to be in my comments giving me a hard time about being a vintage plane guy and not running a vintage plane. So, it's a little Type 13. Sorry. Uh... Type 11, type 11 with a type 13 lever cap. That actually belongs to a friend of mine who lives up in Deltaville. Not the original iron, not the original lever cap. The blade was sharpened by none other than Ryan Powell because quite honestly, I don't have time in my life to be sharpening blades. Something about priorities or something. This is as good a time as any to talk about wood selection. This is just actually a piece of pine, probably like a number two pine. It's got some relatively tight grain or nice grain, so it works pretty good. And just in case you're relatively new to hand planes and stuff, rule of thumb, of course, you always want to plane with the grain. And if you're like me and you have a hard time just looking at some grain and going, oh, yeah, it's running this way, you can run your finger along it. And you can actually tell, it's, if you think of it as like petting a dog or petting a cat, if you pet the cat the wrong way or the dog the wrong way, the hair is going to stand up. And so it's the same thing with green. If you run your finger along it like that and you feel like it's going with the green, you switch directions and it feels rough and it doesn't feel as smooth, then that's going to give you a pretty good indication of which direction the green is running. Let me go over some basic number 45 just employment tips techniques whatever first of all i don't use the knob i mean you may find that you like it i can i feel like i cannot put the proper pressure on this in order to make this work so i actually grip it right here and my whole purpose in life with my left hand is to apply pressure against the fence to hold the fence up against the stock that's the whole reason that my left hand is there so i'm not death gripping it but at the same time i'm keeping firm pressure with that fence against the stock and as far as adjusting it goes i think i mentioned before that i was ever so slightly off and when you're making these micro adjustments you're going to loosen this screw right here and you're going to make your adjustment using this screw right here so you're going to move this little dude in and out and hopefully the camera is such as positioned such that you can see that moving so you're going to do your your big adjustment using the fence itself using these screws right here and once those are set you're going to make your micro adjustment or your fine adjustment using this screw right here and all you're doing is you're looking to have the same distance from either side of the blade to the outside of the wood i know that seems obvious but that's me i'm i'm captain obvious and what's really really easy to do is to have this thing sitting to one side or the other and not realize that you're not centered like you thought you were. And so it's super important. The same way that you're going to grip the plane when you go to actually use it, you want to be gripping it the same way 
and that way you can really get a solid idea of whether you're centered on that piece of wood or not. Once you're set, it's super, super easy to forget to then tighten this set screw. You got to make sure you tighten that down and put put a little stank on it when, when you tighten that down because what you don't want is you don't want your micro adjust fence drifting on you while you're actually using the plane. And then a common mistake that I've heard that folks make is they try and start at one end of the, the opposite end of the board, run it the same way that they would a bench plane. And my experience is that that does not work. It's really easy to go off track. It's really easy to lose yourself. To me, it's just easier to start on the far end of the board and then work your way back. But there's no right or wrong way to do it. You got to figure out what works best for you. So once you're set and you've got everything locked into place, then you're ready to rock and roll. And we're putting in our reps, putting in our reps. Remember, we're going to give it a little, little dig there off the end. And then that way our blade knows exactly where we want it to go. And then we're going to work our way back. And I don't have this blade set very deep, so I'm not taking a very deep shaving or a very big shaving at one time, which is pretty important. A lot of people talk about their blade getting fouled, so it gets a bunch of shavings in there, and then it's not cutting, but you take a nice shallow cut, and you're not going to have to worry about, or not going to have to worry as much about that blade getting fouled. But as a side note, if you are taking a deeper shaving or you find that your blade is getting fouled more than you want it to, of course, you can try and remove the shavings with your fingers. Another good option is to have a screwdriver on the bench and you can work those out. Whatever, you know, you got to kind of practice and experiment and figure out what's going to work best for you. But as you can see, got my nice reed laying down here. And at least from this angle, it looks like I'm closer to center. I might be where I need to be. And that's the, that's the crux. That's a big vocabulary word for you. That's the crux of the challenge is you want to just practice. You're practicing with your bench planes, whether it's one or multiple. You're practicing with your combination plane. And you can even mix that up too. You know, you can say, I'm going to practice this profile and then I'm going to switch it up and do this profile or use your number 45 and then switch to your number 55. Whatever, you know, again, have some fun with it because that's what it's all about, right? Just plain fun. You're putting in your reps, you're putting in your time. So that way you get quicker at setting your 45 up. You learn some little tips of your own, some little techniques that work for you. And before you know it, you're apprenticing under yourself. And you start to get really good with your number 45. And of course, I wouldn't say that I'm really good with it, but I get by. And here's our little sanity check. Remember, we talked about making sure that you're not slanted to one side or the other which takes a, a little bit of practice before you get that good, or well, maybe not good, but before you get proficient, let's go with that. But I would say that that's pretty solid right there as far as staying on track. And there you have it, folks. That's the challenge. Take your choice of combination plane, your choice of profile or multiple profiles, your choice of bench plane or multiple bench planes, your choice of stock, and just... Put in some reps, baby, and then let's see what you got. You know, take a video, post some pictures on Facebook, Reddit, and post a video on TikTok, whatever, wherever you want to put it. Even if you don't have a YouTube channel, post a video on YouTube anyway. You probably got a channel and don't even know it. But let's see what you got, and let's see y'all how you do with the challenge.